My beloved people, there is only one thing that I wish to bring to your particular attention today of uh, importance, and that is that Thursday of this week is the anniversary of the dedication of this church and is therefore a very important day, at least for us. And it is a day of many graces and a day of many blessings. And I certainly recommend that you uh, remember that day. I know that uh, you will not be, most of you will not be able to come to church on that day, that's fine. But at least try to remember to say special prayers on that day because it is a day of important graces and a day of important blessings. And please pray for us as we plod through the difficulties that are constantly facing us from every direction and that God will always give us the strength to be able to pick up our feet and continue moving. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Who is there that overcomes the world if not he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. My beloved people, Too many today seem to believe, probably because it is easier to believe that, they seem to believe that the crisis that exists in the world today, and in the church, of course, but first and foremost, the crisis that believes in the church today is a crisis in obedience. I fear that's not so. The crisis that exists in the church today, and for that matter in the world, is a crisis of faith. This is not to say that there is not a crisis in obedience. Yes. There is a crisis in obedience, but it is not the crisis. The crisis is faith. People, generally speaking, even good people, have lost and are losing their faith. Probably, most probably, because this is not being instructed to them in the proper way, in the proper light. And the emphasis is placed on the improper things, the inappropriate things, the unimportant things of life. And as we have said or spoken about in the past several weeks, we've spoken about uh, bad obedience and bad humility and bad charity and bad whatever you wish to think about. The reason why charity is bad, though superficially it looks good, the reason why obedience is bad, though superficially it looks good, the reason why humility is bad, though superficially it may look good, the reason, and other things, the reason why these things are taking place is because people do not believe. Or at least they do not believe in the proper way. If you ask 
about the average, even traditional Roman Catholic, why he goes to a traditional Roman Catholic chapel, the chances are very likely that he will give as the reason, well, I like the way they do things there. And I do not like the way they do things in the other church. Generally speaking, this is what you are going to find as an answer. That's not good enough. That's not good enough at all. The reason, the only reason that we must give is that in which we believe. And what do we believe? Do we believe that the priest is valid? Do we believe that the church is okay? Do we believe that the devotion to the saints is to be fostered? which it is, and we go on. What is the center of our belief? What must be the center of our belief? And the center of our belief has to be that which is in the Holy of Holies right now in the tabernacle. When the priest approaches you at the time of communion, what does he put in your mouth? Oh, it's very easy to say he puts the Lord in my mouth. Or it's very easy to say he puts Jesus in my mouth. It's very simple to say that. Protestants say that. Everybody can say that. There's no problem with that. But for those who go to the very essence of the belief, when the pre what does the priest put in your mouth? Is it a symbol? What does the priest put in your mouth? Is it bread? Or is it flesh? What does he put in the mouth? Is it bread or is it living flesh? And unless and until we come to the understanding and the acceptance of this one idea, this one thought, this one basic principle, this one reality, unless and until we come to the understanding of that, we cannot say that we believe. And this is at the very center of the complete religious controversy that exists today. The guns are not aimed at the symbolism that is involved in the Eucharist. The guns, the guns are aimed at the flesh of the Eucharist. And horrible as it sounds, many of the ones who pull the, tri the trigger 
of those guns are the same ones that utter the words, this is my body. Isn't that something? Now that is mind boggling. I heard only the other day also, probably because of the battle against priesthood or the necessity of priesthood. I heard only the other day that when we speak of transubstantiation, and I'm assuming that everybody knows what transubstantiation means, that the, tran the, the, the transubstantiation, the changing of the, of the bread into, into body, the, the instant, the instant that the bread changes into body. This is what I heard, that it does not take place. It does not take place at the instant that the priest says, this is my body. It takes place when the priest raises the host. And it is the community of the people when they see this piece of bread in his hands, it is the community that makes the flesh. Now, isn't that interesting? I didn't know that. Did you? And who are the ones that are teaching that? The same ones that say, this is my body. Therefore, anybody that believes that will believe practically anything you tell them. And it's another further condemnation of the priesthood. Why is the eternal priesthood of Jesus Christ such a stumbling block to everybody? But this is some of the stuff that is being taught. At least Maybe it's a step in the right direction because we have, I have in my little teeny library in my room, a book that has been used in our Catholic schools, whether it's being used at the moment or not, I don't know. I have lost some of my agents in proper places and they are not bringing me things that they should ought to be bringing me as they used to bring me. I used to be quite well informed. Agents are so important. In this book, Catechism, that is being used or was used to teach and prepare our children for receiving the sacrament of confirmation in our churches in bold print as clear as it could possibly be stated, or as clearly as it could possibly be stated, the Eucharist is symbolic. In other words, the Eucharist is no more than a picture that you look at of your loved one, perhaps. The Eucharist is nothing but a piece of bread. But this is my answer to those people. If bread is all they want, then 
let them have their bread. We are not satisfied with bread. We must have the flesh. And this is what we believe. Belief is something that cannot be defined, actually. It cannot be described. It is a feeling. Today's gospel, when St. Thomas did his thing, He fell on his knees. There was no dialogue. There was no word. He simply fell on his knees and said, my Lord and my God. That's all that was said. And this is what we have to do. We have to fall on our knees and not just say the words, but we must mean the words from the very essence of our, from the very center point of our hearts, we do believe you are God. And as we now proceed after Easter, when the Holy Passion is over and the Holy Resurrection is over, we must make ourselves that kind of Christian, that kind of Catholic that does believe and believes that this little particle that is placed in your mouth is not a piece of bread. It looks like bread. It tastes like bread. It smells like bread. It has all of the characteristics of a piece of bread. But it isn't bread. And that is something that we have to believe. And we have to believe it thoroughly and completely. And that we should be willing to give up our lives to protect that piece of that we have in our hands or on our tongues. This is the stumbling block of all stumbling blocks to those who do not believe. And it has come to the point, unfortunately and sadly, that for those who do not believe, for those who do not want to believe, for those who do not care to believe, we have to make the admission no argument is possible. Let them be. It's there. No more and no less. Because this is a matter of faith. And faith is something that has to be, that has to surround us as a cloud. And unless we have faith, there can be no argument. Because to one who has faith or has no faith, you hold two pieces in your hands. And to that one, he cannot see the difference. But to the one who does have faith, even though they look alike, he does see the difference. My beloved people, this is what we must learn. Faith to keep, to grow, and to live with. God bless you.